Thanks to NordPass for sponsoring today's video. Get a three-month free trial of NordPass business by going to nordpass.com slash michaelpenn using the discount code michaelpenn. Today we're going to look at something that I like to call my favorite identity. And it involves sums of natural numbers, squaring them, and also cubing them, but doing it in a different order. But somehow you get the same thing. In particular, this is true that for all natural numbers in, if you sum them and then square, it's the same thing as cubing them and then summing them. And so I've worked out some examples so we can see this in action. Notice that one plus two plus three squared is the same thing as six squared, which is 36, which is the same thing as one plus eight plus 27, but that is one cubed plus two cubed plus three cubed. Furthermore, one plus two plus three plus four plus five squared is 15 squared, which is 225, which is the same thing as, after all is said and done, one cubed plus two cubed plus three cubed plus four cubed plus five cubed. So there's lots and lots and lots of proofs of this identity, but I'd like to give a proof of this identity, which is based on one of my other like little favorite subjects that doesn't show up very much, the subject of discrete calculus. So let's get to it. Passwords are stealing your hackers. <laughs> Sorry. Um... Hackers are stealing your passwords. There we go. But you can protect yourself and your business with NordPass. Since you're watching this video, you probably have a YouTube account. You probably also have administrative logins for your business for things like banking, software, subscriptions, payroll, etc. Keeping track of all those logins can be a nightmare. That's why we use NordPass Business. With NordPass Business Password Manager, we save time and energy, allowing us to focus on bringing you these videos. With easy access to our business accounts, it's possible for us to work anywhere and from any device backed by state-of-the-art cybersecurity technology. For example, when my new editor producer came on board, I needed to share my super secret YouTube password among others with her, but it needed to be done securely. NordPass allowed me to safely share all of the logins she needed with just a few clicks. We also use NordPass to store my credit card info so that we can make business purchases and with their breach monitoring service, which proactively scans the web 24 seven for data breaches that involve our online accounts and notifies us in real time Time. We know that we're fully protected no matter what. Keep your most important business data safe and useful by going to nordpass.com slash michaelpenn and using the discount code michaelpenn to get a three-month trial of NordPass business today. Thanks again to NordPass Business for sponsoring today's video. So let's look at the necessary definition. So given a sequence a sub n, so that defines a list of numbers, a sub one, a sub two, a sub three, a sub four, but it's an infinite list of numbers. So the way I really wanna think about this is not as a list of numbers, but as a function from the natural numbers to the real numbers. It's just when you insert the variable into the function, you put it in the subscript instead of like in parentheses, which is the more standard functional notation. But that's really exactly what's going on here with this sequence. It's just a function whose domain is the natural numbers. It's a discrete domain. Instead of the domain being the real numbers, a continuous domain. Okay, so let's get back to this. The discrete derivative of this function or of this sequence, if you will, is defined to be, well, we'll use this notation delta a sub n. It's a sub n plus one minus a sub n. This is also sometimes known as the forward difference operator. That's because you're going forwards with the index. I'd like to draw a nice comparison here with the continuous derivative, which is defined in limit form to be the limit as h goes to zero of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. And this makes sense inside of the real numbers because limits make sense inside of the real numbers. But notice the closest the elements of the domain can get in the natural numbers is one. So that means a limit wouldn't really make sense unless it's an infinite limit. And the closest you can get x plus h to x is one unit, but that would be exactly what we have right here. Okay, so now that we've motivated what's going on, I'd like to prove a little lemma. And that lemma, 
And that lemma will say, if you take the discrete derivative of a sequence and you get zero, then your sequence has to be a constant sequence. But that's very much in parallel with what types of functions have a derivative of zero. Okay, so anyway, let's write this down. If delta a n is equal to zero, so where I'm thinking of this as the constant sequence zero, so that means it would be zero, 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 so on and so forth, then a n equals some constant for n bigger than or equal to one. So it's always equal to some value. Okay, let's see how this proof goes. And this proof is not so difficult. And perhaps you could like go overboard and prove it by induction, but we're not gonna do that here. Okay, so let's maybe note the following. If we take delta a n, that's the same thing as a n plus one minus a n, but we've assumed that to be equal to zero. So what does that tell us? That tells us that a n plus one is equal to a n for all natural numbers n. Oh, but that means as you move through the natural numbers, this sequence is not changing. So that means we could make this descending list here. We could go, notice that a n plus one is equal to a n, which is equal to a n minus one, which is equal to a n minus two, all the way down until you get to a two, which is finally equal to a one. But then you could also go up as well. This is equal to a n plus two and so on and so forth. So in the end, they are all equal and they're all equal to that number a one. So what we have here is that a n is in fact equal to a one for all natural numbers n, but that's exactly what we need for a constant sequence. Okay, so now let's use this lemma to prove our result, my favorite identity. Okay, so what we'll do is set the left-hand side of this equal to a certain function, well, a certain sequence, but think about it as a function with natural numbers domain. Then we'll set the right side equal to another function with natural number domain. So let's get that set up here. So I'm gonna reuse a sub n from my definitions and stuff, but I think that's okay. So we're gonna set a sub n equal to one plus two plus three plus ending at n quantity squared. And then we'll set b sub n equal to one cubed plus two cubed plus all the way up to n cubed. And now what we'll do is look at the discrete derivative of each of these and show that they have to be the same. So we have the discrete derivative of a sub n will be a sub n plus one minus a sub n. But that gives us the sum one plus two ending at n plus one. I'll throw the n in there just for good measure, all squared minus the sum ending at n all squared. But now we can apply the factorization rule for a difference of squares. So maybe let's recall that up here in the margin. We have a squared minus b squared equals a minus b times a plus b. So what do we get for a minus b in this case? We'll notice that this term in here minus this term in here a lot of stuff cancels out. In fact, the only thing that survives is this n plus one. So that means our a minus b term is n plus one. And then what does our a plus b term look like? We'll notice we'll have n plus one from this right here. And then we'll have two times the sum from one to n. So I'll write that as two times the sum, one plus two plus all the way up to n. And now I'm gonna do something which I kinda wish we didn't have to do, but it makes everything a lot simpler. And I think it is okay in just kind of illustrating this um, rule. And that is we will use the closed form for the sum of one to n. And you could derive this as well using a discrete derivative trick if you wanted to. Maybe I'll leave that as a nice homework exercise to apply this method of discrete calculus to derive this formula. But that being said, let's recall that the sum of the first n natural numbers is n times n plus one over two. 
what does that end up leaving us with? So we have n plus one, and then in here we'll have n plus one plus n times n plus one, because notice the two cancels. But after moving some things around, we see that this is n plus one quantity cubed. Okay, so now let's bring that result up here and we'll look at b sub n. So we just determined that the discrete derivative of this sequence a sub n was n plus one cubed. Now let's see what we get for b sub n. So delta b sub n, that'll be b n plus one minus b n. But this is a lot easier because we don't have a square operating on a bunch of stuff. This gives us one cubed plus two cubed all the way up. We have n cubed in there and then n plus one cubed. And from that, we are subtracting one cubed plus two cubed all the way up to n cubed. And now you can see that lots of stuff cancels. So this one cancels with this one, for instance. This two cubed cancels with this two cubed all the way up to this n cubed cancels with this n cubed, leaving us exactly with n plus one cubed. So we have this is equal to n plus one cubed. So what does that mean? Well, let's notice that we have delta a sub n minus b sub n will be equal to delta a sub n minus delta b sub n. I haven't proven that this operator is additive, but I think it's pretty clearly additive by its definition over here. But notice this is equal to n plus one cubed minus n plus one cubed. But in my mind, that's equal to zero. So we have delta a n minus b n is equal to zero. But then by our lemma, that tells us not only that a sub n minus b sub n equals a constant, but it's equal to whatever the first term of this sequence is. So in that case, that'll be a sub one minus b sub one. But we can pretty easily see that a sub one is one and b sub one is also one. So we have one minus one, which is zero. But now in the end, we can move things around and get a sub n equals b sub n, which finishes this thing off. Okay, before we end the video, I'd like to look at a nice continuous version of this identity. Now we're gonna look at a continuous version of this identity. So let's start with this left-hand side. And so what would a continuous version of a sum be? Well, I think a continuous version of a sum is an integral. That's essentially the motivation for the way that we define an integral to make a continuous version of a sum. Now, this integral seems like it should start at the number one and then end somewhere. I'll maybe use the capital A to be wherever it ends. But since this is a continuous version, this A could really be any real number. Maybe to be safe, we would take it to be any real number bigger than one, just so that it mimics what's going on here. The sum from one up to N. N is bigger than or equal to one here. Okay, so we've got the integral of x dx. So that would be a generalization of the sum that's happening inside of those parentheses, but then we're squaring that thing. But now let's look at what's going on over here. Here we're summing the cubes. So if we were to look at a continuous version of that, it would be essentially the same thing, the integral from one to a, but now we would have x cubed dx. And now we could check that these are the same. So notice we can integrate this thing. We'll get a squared over two quantity squared. So that's by the fundamental theorem of calculus. But then squaring that will give us a to the fourth over four. But that's exactly equal to our other version using the fundamental theorem of calculus. And now I'm gonna leave you with a question. And that question is, can you construct obvious continuous identities like this one that's on the board. I think it's way more obvious than this, especially the calculation is super short. And do those obvious continuous identities give rise to maybe less obvious discrete identities? And if you find any, maybe post them in the comments. And that's a good place to stop. 
Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button, subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you want to get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpenmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.